Hey everyone, welcome back, and this is another anime review of an, another anime that ended recently for the spring of 2013. And this anime is Selector Infected Wii Cross. It's spelled W-I-X-O-S-S, but it's pronounced Wii Cross. A very unique and dark anime. I guess you could say it's kind of, um, caters to the whole, you know, Still relatively new genre that's called that, that's really called um, the uh, reverse magical girl series. Although it's a different type of reverse magical girl series because the magical girls here don't really have like special powers themselves or anything. It's basically based on the card game that they play. So yes, this is also yet another card game based anime, but it's a very good one though. Really, from the little of Mato Comagica that I've actually seen, I really ca called this anime, and I'm very confident by saying this, it's pretty much Mato Comagica X Yu Gi Oh! And that's really what it is, although, from what I've heard, Mato Comagica is way darker than this, and this series only ran for tw a total of 12 episodes with a second season slated for the fall, I think, starting October, with another 12 episodes. And the series does end on a major fucking cliffhanger, but we already knew before the series, actually shortly after the series began, really, that a second season would be coming. You know, initially I thought this was going to be 24 episodes per season, which really 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 cool, but either way, this is still pretty, a very good series, I thought. And I can't wait for a season two. So what is Selector Infected Recross about? Well, Selector Infected Wii Cross basically is about this card game known as Wii Cross. Es and essentially what Wii Cross is, is each person has like this one monster which is known as an up, uh, or this one like, I don't want to really call it a monster card because they're all like female, like fe normal female humans with powers really. But inside of each of these cards is a normal human female with powers known as LIRGs. And there's lots of other cards which are rarely used, unfortunately, but when they are, unfortunately, but when they are, they're used to, like, power up the uh, individual card. And the individual card can communicate all they want with the selector, which the selector is the one who holds these cards. Anyone who's not an actual selector is in, unable to really play the game to, to its fullest extent or communicate with the card or whatever. Okay, only the selectors are able to. We still don't know how these girl, how these middle school girls were selected or what they were selected for. Although there are theories floating around as to what exactly that might be. But that being said, the series is very simple, but it's does take a dark turn and really it built, built up suspense perfectly. You know, the writing was very well done. Hold on, see, I want to see who... Okay, this Studio JC staff really... For me personally, I de don't really think I've seen a series that, I, that they've done which was bad, although I'm sure it exists. Really, my biggest uh, experience with JC staff has been Toradora and as of recently, Golden Time. And I'm gonna tell you, both of those series are nothing like this. Okay? This series is sad and kind of depressing, although it's nowhere near the most depressing anime I've ever seen in my life. Okay? And each of the ca main characters really complements it well. You know, Ruko Kominato is the main character. And before I get into talking about the characters, I just want to bring something up. Have you ever noticed how most of the time in an anime, the main, when a, the main character is a male, that that character is usually, not always, but usually boring, bland, and lifeless. But when the main character is a female, especially in a series like this, usually the character is very interesting. And Ruko is very interesting, okay? When she I mean, when she finds out about what the game is, this game is really like, 
like you see, you really see her go through a, a, a psychological change in a way. Which is something I actually forgot to talk about is what this game is really like. The basic premise of the game is that if you win three battles, you get to ha have your deepest wish granted for you, okay? Whatever that is, by becoming what's known as an eternal girl. And your deepest wish will be granted for you, however, if you lose three battles, that wish becomes tainted, and actually the exact opposite will happen. For example, okay, um, see here. There's a character, a female character called a a a Akira Aoi, and Akira is a is someone who wanted to basically. Not, we're not sure what her wish was before she met Ruko, but after meeting Ruko, her wish became she wanted to make Ruko's life miserable. She basically wanted to ruin Ruko's life because she just couldn't fucking stand her. So after she lost her third battle, her life was basically ruined. Not only was her face completely scarred. So, you know, she was basically a supermodel, so her face was completely scarred. She couldn't continue that, but it seemed like she was left broken, homeless, and everything. Okay, so that's one way how a wish can become tainted. Another example is Hitoe Uemura, who, and her wish was that she wanted to make friends. She was, because she was a very shy, and timid, and lonely girl. And all she wanted was to make friends, so she, as a selector, she fought these battles so that she could make friends. However, her story is one of the most tragic because she didn't even know what would happen if she lost three. If so, she lost three battles, and when she lost her third battle, that wish became tainted, so she could never make friends. And what I mean by this is that. She was literally incapable of making friends. Anyone who would come close to her with the intention of becoming friends with her, it would hurt her mind and body profusely, and so she would run away. Okay, that's basically what I mean by that. So that's a couple of examples of how a wish can become tainted. However, if you win three battles, there's also a catch to that, too. Your wish will be granted, however... First off, the uh, LRIG has to agree with it. Okay. If they decide they don't agree with it, then it won't occur. However, the other catch is that although your wish will be granted, it won't be granted for you, but it will be granted. Uh, oh, but it'll be granted for the LRIG that's trapped in the card because they're not just you know random entities; they're actually people trapped in these cards. Okay. For example, there's the uh, selector named y Yuzuki Kure. Bayashi, and guess what her wish is? Her wish is that she can <laughs> safely fall in love with her brother, um, Kazuki. Okay, yeah, basically, I'm not really sure the specifics of what she was hoping for, but I'm guessing she was hoping that they would stop, somehow stop being blood-related, so that she could actually have a romantic relationship with him. How, and when she wins her third battle, which her uh, LRIG name is Hanayo. However, when she wins her third battle, she, um, Yuzuki actually becomes the LRIG, and Hanayo ends up getting Yuzuki's wish granted for her. <laughs> okay. So that's the biggest catch right there, is that the only ones that can win this is the LRIGs, and really they have their motivation, they're trapped in these cards, and they want to be free, okay? And they're not allowed to tell any of this to the other, um, to their selectors, or they'll die, and I think it's supposed to be assumed that if a selector loses three battles, then the LRIG will die as well. Okay, so it's a very grim setup here, but it works out very well. You know, and I really felt that all of the main characters, you know, Ruko, Yuzuki, and Hitoe, all three of them, were very likable. Akira was a prissy rich bitch, in layman's terms, and you hate her, but you're supposed to hate her. Yona's a character that I just don't get. Like, obviously I'm pretty sure that whatever's up with her is going to be cleared up in Season 2, but... 
I just don't get her character at all. Like, what her motivation was, because in the very last episode, she won apparently revealed that she already won plenty of battles to become an Eternal Girl, but she was missing one final um, requirement, whatever that was, I don't think was ever revealed. But when she finally becomes an Eternal Girl, uh, we don't really know what her wish was, and I th but I think she might have became the LRIG for Ruko. But that would also beg the question, whatever happened, the fuck happened to Tama, which was Ruko's LRIG, and I think quite likable character, because she didn't really have any memories of anything about this, so even if she wanted to tell Ruko to save her, she couldn't. Okay. And that's just the basic rundown of the plot and characters. Okay. But my biggest plot with the plot... My biggest plot... My biggest problem with the plot is that I wish it would have gotten even darker than it did, because it had numerous opportunities to do just that, and it kind of fell short. I'm not saying this has a happy setup, because trust me, it doesn't, okay? But it had numerous opportunities to actually go full-fledged pitch black dark, and it really didn't, like, and people who love Madoka Magica say that Madoka Magica is better. I haven't watched, in terms of darker, I haven't watched it all the way through, so I can't say that for, my, for myself, okay? But, I just wish it would have gotten went a lot darker than it did. That being said, the plot was still really good, and these characters are well-developed. They have great character characterization, and... They're very likable, so when these horrible things, at least the, the main characters, 